I I just started the recording, so I'm going to record for yeah. <laughs> Let's see. This is uh, 16th of January, 2022. We're EVO Minecraft Mook. We just cut into a really interesting discussion, which we weren't recording. And now we're going to have sort of a uh, an event, which is a fish fry. And, and we'll see if we keep talking or fry fish or whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm just uh, going to be here for an hour recording, and then um, I'm going to go to bed. Everybody else will start their days. Everybody work to the docks. Yeah. Okay, okay, everybody warp to the dock. Okay. Dakota wants us to warp to the dock. There, there. Yay! Great to see everybody here. Yay! Oh, we got a nice uh, portrait here. We do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's in the video. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm feeling kind of naked here. Everybody oh, says, uh, Star Lizard is here. Armor and I'm, I'm sitting here in my, uh, my shorts, my PJs. Or... Well, no, no, Abu, you are the only one who has come dressed appropriately because it was, <laughs> the idea was this was going to be a session for beginners. You know, when you, okay. when you first log into the world and you normally don't log into the world with full enchanted diamond armor. <laughs> Yeah, so Abu Fletcher can oh, pretend to be a crab. beginner. There we go. I mean, ah. Dave, my buddy, my buddy here, Till Crab. We're sort of uh, yeah, over we're, here. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. You? Yeah. No, I mean, I found my way here. I wasn't sure um, what I was doing, but mm -hmm. I always have. It takes me a kind of a while to get back in and remember what all the controls do and everything. Jamie is here. Yeah, I'm kind of the same one. I, uh, you know, it's like I play once a year, and that's that's sort of it. Yeah, me too. But um, I really look forward to it, and I enjoy it very much. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, welcome. And uh, we're just uh, trying to get people here on the server so we can sort of enjoy ourselves and see how we might use this kind of tool with students. And we've been talking, I wish I'd recorded the last hour, a philosophical discussion. <laughs> hey, Maddie. Haven't seen you for a long time. Yeah, there's Maddie. Is Hi, Maddie, Maddie in? Yep. He's, yes. he's right over here by Bobby. I'm just so jumping. Oh, he's not in? He's, a, he's supposed to be in bed. Oh. Place. Well, he probably is in bed. <laughs> With his device. <laughs> okay, so um, what we're going to do is uh, you would start as you log in at the dock location. That's kind of like the world, the spawn start area. You can get here with slash warp dock, as everyone just did. Mm -hmm. and or you can die. And you can... Come here. <laughs> well, if, if you haven't left it in a bed somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to follow this path around this local landmark uh, known as the Haiku Forest and it's named uh, because of an event which will take place here later in the session. Okay, so we just follow you, Doc? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a... There's a zombie. Oh. An ex-zombie. Yes. He dropped a piece of toast. Yes. I heard someone talking in the background, but I couldn't make out what they said. Uh, if you get stuck for a place to stay, here's one here. There's a little shelter right there, which you can sneak into if you need an assist. And that's on the path to the Haiku Forest. So make yourself at home in there if you need that space. You can get to it by warp dock and head up the path and save yourself from whatever is bothering you at night. 
And then over here, you'll see a, a portal that's made out of powdered wool. This is a new technology technology that's been added to the server, which uh, uh, we can talk about later if we have time. But basically, if you walk through there, as soon as you step on the plate, it will take you to another location called Sferdi Fjell, which is where our session is going to be held. So if you walk through the portal and then gather at the other end. Oh, big sound effects. Vacuum cleaner. I hadn't heard that before. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Ah! Oh. oh no. It's okay. I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're still talking, so I guess they came out safely on the other yes, side. Yes, yes, yes. There are people here who are who look no worse for the wear. Oh. And there's an, um, another, another path here. Vance. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, Hi, but Jane. um, mm -hmm. M H Ty is trying to join us in Discord, but M he's not. H you know, he, he doesn't have access to our voice channel uh, yet. Okay. Uh, I don't really have. Uh, I can't promote people. Only Olive Tree can. Uh, oh. one, mo one moment. Oh, MS Ty. You mean uh, Sai? That's uh, Matty. Yeah. Matty, oh. Matty, yeah. Uh huh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I white listed him. No, that's, but I... that's actually Michael. Oh, Michael, oh, okay. Michael? Yeah, yeah. My, my husband. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a different set of permissions. <laughs> I have to have him try now. I promoted him to minor. Yay! You. There you go. Well done. <laughs> I have to have him join us. Excuse me. Yes. Um, this is this is Finch. I have a question. Will there be fishing rods provided because we didn't bring any? Yes, yes, that will be part of the program. Yay. Thank you. Good question. Hi, Finch. Welcome. I, I tend not to uh, do too much. Uh, uh, I can't think of the word, but I don't let people have hints about the program. <laughs> okay, so if you can find your way to the stairs here and go down and cross the bridge. Uh -oh. This is... Uh, uh, an area based on a, a real-world monument. Um, there are several NPCs inside, uh, two of which are fishermen, which will allow you to trade with them with emeralds to uh, actually buy fishing poles to collect fish with. Uh, if you're a new player, you probably don't have any emeralds. So uh, the first thing we'll learn is how would you get some emeralds? There are also two people in there who are farmers who will trade vegetables for emeralds. And if you notice, when we came across the bridge, there was a very large garden over there. This is, there's a smaller one here as well. Um, if you go up the rows of uh, vegetables and left click on them, you'll harvest them if they're ripe. And then if you hold them in your hand and right hand click one of them, you can replant so more will grow. We can clear the ones in this garden, they're ready. Sustainable living. I warned everyone that I would make it work. And we have such a nice turnout today, we may find out that we don't have enough vegetables for everyone to buy a fishing pole. And if that turns out to be the case, they also have a surplus of fishing poles in their barrel, which there are workstations. Uh, you can write me on those and just take a fishing pole as well. Hmm. 
Must be some carrots around here somewhere. Everyone finding some vegetables to harvest? Mm hmm. I'm lost. I went off wandering and then I lost you all. Oh, you can TP. Just TP to us. Slash TP and uh, just pick a name. And then pick any name. Yeah. But you want to be with. Do I have a I was trying to get the cake, but I just destroyed it. I'm like, no, it went to waste. Um, that's the way cake works. When you right hand click on cake that's hidden there, it, it takes a slice off if you're hungry. And if you keep doing it, you'll keep eating more slices. But that's what it's for, for you to eat. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I didn't actually succeed in eating it. So did you then yeah, you have to oh, be you actually hungry. You might actually destroy it. But I can, I can oh, touch some more yeah. I can do that. <clears throat> so I, I don't think I'm going to be able to buy a fishing pole. Okay, if you look in the barrels that are there, uh, right hand click on a barrel, it should open up and there should be fishing poles inside. You can take them. Uh, where, where's the barrel? Down by the river, uh, where I'm at. Uh, you can see that Rickerty is standing on his. Okay. Right here. Uh, okay. Yeah, so just grab one of those, huh? Yep, help yourself. Okay. And then Rafferty is over right Yeah, one. Okay. And I have a I have a bunch of carrots if someone wants to try trading with the farmers. I'll put them in the vittles box inside. How many carrots do you, do I need to trade with the farmer? A lot. Twenty-two. Um, they'll want like twelve or thirteen carrots uh, for one emerald, and you're probably going to need like twelve or thirteen emeralds to buy a fishing pole. So you're going to need hundreds of vegetables. Not Yeah, I noticed that too. Like I, yeah, I got fifteen carrots and realized no way was I going to be able to trade for. Yes. Then, then you learned the lesson that I was trying to teach, is that it takes a lot of hard work to actually earn something in game, just like in the real world. It's like you're not just going to earn a, a real fishing pole in five minutes. It takes, like, days to actually earn one. Well, you've got to kill a spider. In, in, in the barrels. <coughs> so where's the farmer? Uh, the farmers are probably inside. Well, All the way inside. Oh there's no! One they're, farmer they're, they're, outside by the barrel. Yes. Yep. Yeah, they're by the. Uh, yeah. Right there's two. The there's one by each of the barrels outside. Oh. Okay. Yeah. The farmer. They seem, they seem to want quite a lot for their wares. There's Ripper tea. <laughs> it sort of seems to only want emeralds. And who's the other one? Yeah. Oh. Oh, emeralds. I don't have any emeralds. Oops. They'll take fish. Yes. For, yep. For us peons, are the new people just starting out? The normal work uh, process is working in the fields, gathering vegetables, trading vegetables for the farmers to get emeralds, trading emeralds for the fishermen to get fishing poles, and then we can get our daily. Well, we can eat vegetables, but we want to. From Rafferty. to so you. Can, when he's no. Well, of course, you could avoid all that fishing by uh, killing a spider and getting some wood. Yeah. 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 Um, this, uh, this particular session is offering an alternative to the normal first day experience where you punch trees, hide out at night, uh, avoiding monsters, 
uh, and fight your way through savagery to uh, survival. We're leading a more civilized uh, uh, life where we just uh, work in the field and sleep in beds at night. Well, my student last year who joined us, I think two years ago, Mitsuki, uh, she absolutely did not want to kill any of the animals uh, to get food. How, how did she survive? Uh, I don't remember whether she played enough to really uh, deal with that problem. Well, she could always uh, have well, maybe vegetables. Maybe came across a village where she could get uh, carrots and such, yeah. Yeah. Vegetarian. Yeah, usually, usually in villages you can find food. And you can turn three wheat into a roll. So you can have your daily bread. Now oh, that we've got it. our fishing rod. Okay, now that if, if everyone has a fishing rod, then uh, if you go to the water and right hand click facing the water with your fishing rod in hand, it will throw the bobble out on the water. And then if you watch the water, if you have your particle setting turned up, you'll see little bubbles that will swim around and come up to the bobber. The bobber will dip violently and you'll hear a splashing noise. At that point, you right hand click again to reel in a fish that's caught. Uh, if you don't time it right, if you right hand click too early or too late, you won't catch your fish. And our goal is to catch six fish? Um, I would say eight fish if we want to be efficient, because when you put one piece of fuel in the in the oven, it cooks. So. Dinner right quick. Oh. Hmm. I just fished out leather boots away. Uh, let me put it somewhere. No, I'm cheating. I keep setting it to morning because I yes. don't want the monsters to kill the villagers. Right click. Whoever that was speaking just now, it was all broken up for me. I don't know if everyone else could hear them. Yeah, they, they were just talking about getting fish, catching fish. Yeah, I'm doing my fishing in the river, uh, if that's a little more effective. Yes, no one can uh, fish by just swimming and punching or striking with a weapon hmm. and getting the fish that way. Hmm. Yep, if you're underwater, uh, you can still cast your cast your hook, but it it goes up. Has, has anyone caught any squid? Mm -hmm. Okay, I got no, a fish. But... Try to kill the squid, and then it'll give you ink after you kill it. With an arrow. Oh, you have to kill it by it hand? Mm -hmm. Can't fish it? Yeah, you can't catch it as you catch fish, but you can kill it like you kill other mobs. Oh, I see. Okay, let me go I see that Jeff is here today. Yeah, hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Jeff. Good, good, good to hear your see voice. You. Thank you for writing that piece on game based learning. Yeah, no problem. Where's its link? I, I've shared it on LinkedIn, and then also um, I think I, Diane um, shared it on Kalaya's Facebook mm. page. Oh, having my horse. <laughs> Now, one of the nice side effects of the horse is sometimes you I will pick up equipment. <laughs> I caught the horse. I uh, caught your horse, fan. Okay. Have fun. I'll, I'll just use one of these uh, striders over here. Oh. Wait. If you land it on land, it just. Okay, I need to get rid of some of some things. Are these mine? Oops. 
I just noticed that I need to have an empty space for some of the unknown fish that I'm yeah, catching. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> There's a golem over here underwater. A storage box for all the random stuff we don't want oh. to just dump everything in to make more space. Oop. I'll be back. Anybody else caught a rabbit a fishing? Rabbit? <laughs> a rabbit fishing? I caught a horse. Yeah, <laughs> pretty clever. <laughs> Could be a seahorse. A seahorse? Eh? Could be. Oh. I caught a puffer fish, so should I eat it? That's the question. Mm -hmm. You can eat it, but you will be poisoned. <laughs> I'm not a trained uh, sushi chef. Mm -hmm. Master, right? Did I could catch him? Puffer fish are very useful for making potions. Water, Water breathing potions, I think. Correct. Oops. How do I untether a, uh, a strider? And puffer fish are useful for feeding to um, aquila. Oh, here we go. I think I got it. Yes. I got it. Right, so, how do I get it? There we go. Can we, you, can we catch any of those fish that are swimming around here? Have I caught any? Yeah. Okay. You just have to look to the bubbles, get right by the um, bobber, and then you pull it in. Here we go. I'm just putting a chest by the bridge. Um, next to the sign that says, thank you for visiting the National Monument. Uh, hmm. Like leather boots. I have fins. I don't need leather boots. I'm going to dump it in the chest and if anybody else. I needed more space. I needed chests. So if people wanted to go through the chest and look for random stuff. <laughs> the idea of this place was that it was set up as a national monument to uh, commemorate the history of the area that uh, long ago, uh, like people have lived here over thousands of years and they've gradually kind of depleted the area of most of the natural resources and moved away but uh, it was a historically significant location because of the, the battles and that, that were fought here. So there's a few people that have stayed behind to kind of management, manage this national monument. So it's kind of treated with a certain amount of respect. Uh, so some of the, the things that are built here will be temporary. They might get uh, taken away. Uh, I apologize to the people who built that wonderful bridge at the end, but that was not part of the design of the place. So. Uh, I took it away without consulting with the builders first, so uh, if you want, uh, we can, can rebuild it someplace else. Uh, it was a wonderful bridge, but that was not part of the, the design here. Uh, but uh, the, the idea was they wanted to show uh, how the, the area had become unlivable. You know, there's hardly any trees left. If you wanted to actually cut down some trees to get wood, you'd have to to go right away to find any, uh, except for that place just across the river where there are all those beautiful trees, but the only reason to go there is because 
one local stubborn person built a wall around there so you can't get to them. I found more ink. I tried fishing from the bridge, but it was too hard. I couldn't see the water from it. But it's fun fishing. Mm. There's a waterfall. Nice. I think I've got about eight. That's enough. Mm hmm. Eight, eight fish is about enough. Yeah. Signs. Okay, <laughs> I'll be back. I'm gonna try to make one to put in your head. A chest and be like. Did you get to ride one of those things back? I tried. I can't Three. manage to untether them. Um, they're, they're too Matt, confusing. Matt is here. Matt is there right now, so maybe um, he can help I'm, you. I'm polluting the water. I need to get rid of stuff, <laughs> and I threw a bottle into the water. <laughs> oh, okay. We thought you were polluting it in another way. I guess the bottle is okay. Depends on what's in the bottle. Of course. That brings up an interesting point. Uh, not that I'm scolding you, because I'm not. But different people play Minecraft in different ways, uh, and there are some uh, who like to play a very immersive game who would consider that littering and uh, offensive, much as they would consider it uh, littering in the real world, that you were you know, destroying the pristine beauty of the stream. Um, and uh, the reason that I bring up the topic is uh, the, also the reason that I brought up the topic of the bridge. Um, we don't have any software in place that allows us to make a claim that says this is an area where I'm building something and I want to make it a certain way and I don't want someone else to come along and change that. Um, so we're all supposed to be on our best behavior. Uh, and if you see something that someone else has built, you know, give it a certain amount of birth. Um, but we're also mostly very tolerant of other people coming in and helping uh, because we're adult educators and we understand that sort of thing but when we're with uh, other communities of builders they have different sets of rules Not just, we were talking earlier about different cultures having different language um, sets of rules and ideas um, and I thought that was one of the things that we can talk about and discuss and model in game as part of the things that we use the game to teach for uh, is the idea of being uh, sensitive to other people's ideas of how we do things and uh, uh, how we play our game and put finger quotes around that phrase and interpret it how you will. So thank you for the example. <laughs> I'm a teachable moment. Extra salmon uh, and some charcoal in the vittles box that's just inside the door behind the, the thank you cake uh, table. Um, my personal way of playing Minecraft is I never cook food with coal because coal imparts a sulfury, stinky taste to food and make it taste terrible. You wouldn't want that. So you always cook food using charcoal, which gives it a nice smoked flavor, which is very mm. pleasing and appealing. So I've placed some charcoal uh, and some extra salmon in case people haven't caught enough fish, uh, so that those who want to use either a furnace or a smoker uh, can cook their fish that way. Uh, and then I'm uh, going to go get some campfires and set some of those up in the big ovens uh, in the middle of the room. And you can also cook your fish just by laying them around a campfire. 
Yes. Um, could those of you who have placed some pets uh, in and around the the stove here possibly move them? I don't know what the danger distance is for the campfire, and I would rather not burn them. Well, that would be uh, cooked dog. I've seen that in Thank Indonesia. Thank you, Chuck. for the charcoal. Thank you. Uh, I, I've managed to nudge the pets back so they're safe now. The way that you uh, cook uh, fish around a campfire is that each of the four corners is a location where you can click a lightning click to place a fish. And then after 10 or 12 seconds or so, it will pop up and float and you can pick it up and recover it cooked. Very tasty. And the last time that we were here, um, we made a nice uh, picnic area outside. Um, my idea of this place is that it would be cold and windy outside, but uh, everybody has a different uh, idea of amazing. Uh, I will set up some chairs and a table inside here for those who wish to be indoors. Even outside is a nice experience. How long does it take for your fish to pop up? Uh, it should take about 10 seconds or so, I think. Oh. Mine just popped up but disappeared uh, because somebody else was quicker, I guess. I, I noticed that last time that we have a fish thief among us, that somebody likes fish. Oh well. Oh. There are two salmon sitting out by the campfire out front. Mm. I think those are mine. I, I'm not sure. Are those mine? Yeah. yeah. They're hers. <laughs> They're done. Are they? Oh, okay. Just click on it? No, no, you, you just run up to it. Walk over him. And then if you press it on the right, the right click. Can we cook puffer fish? I don't believe so. You can try. I wonder I can place it on the campfire. The fish on there. Oh, right. The fish is cooked. Oh, sorry. Because. What's the worst that could happen eating this raw puffer fish? <laughs> yeah, you could just have to oh, respond. Oh, I can't even right click on it. Let me eat it. Hmm. Oh. Did you cook it first? My fish seemed to dissolve. 
<laughs> they seem to go up in smoke. I placed about seven fish now, and not a single one has ended up in my inventory. Uh, yeah, you have to approach them and they jump into your hand. I thought you had to right click on them, but I think you just. Yeah, if, if, if you get close enough to them, they should go into your inventory. Yeah. So if your fish have disappeared, you might want to check the inventory. Now, for those of you who want to, something to go with your fish, we have the uh, the Lobinator 9000 over here. If you have some potatoes left over from harvesting, um, you can put them in the Lobinator 9000 and they will be baked with lava, the best kind of baked potato. But there are some that are already done over on the side. I'll put some out on the table. Um, if you have a bunch of potatoes, you can load them around as well. This place, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the lava place around back for loading the lava. So you have to load the potatoes in the front. You just take a potato from its frame. Yep, just punch it. Okay. Let's see, that is a baked potato. Hmm. I yeah, don't I have any room. I out how to name them lava baked potatoes so they could be distinguished from a normal, ordinary mm. baked potato. Ah. I'll work on that for next time. Mm hmm. Okay. You'll, you'll know by the taste as soon as you bite into it. Ugh, can't bite into it, I'm too full. And once everybody is uh, full up with their snacks, uh, the next thing one would do once one has a full belly is uh, maybe look for uh, new digs and the project to work on. And I can show uh, another set of portals uh, to show where the rest of civilization has gone to after they've exhausted all the resources here. So if everyone will let me know when they're uh, bored with this and ready to move on. Well, ready to move on. Oh hmm? How do you sit? Uh, you right hand should. flip on either a slab or a stair. Or a person. Am I sitting? Yes, you are. Use F5. Uh, if, you hit, if you hit F5, yeah. you And then the shift to get up, and then you have to hit the to jump, I think. Where do you... Uh, oh. What do I say? Oh, crap. Something's, something's attacking me after this person's done. Oh. Yeah, there's, there's some sort of glitch with the, the mod that does the sit. When you do the shift to get up, it drops you inside the block. You have to jump to get out of the block. I'm having problems with my F F5 key. Are you on a laptop? Yes. Okay, you may have to press FN F5. Or, yeah, there may be an FN key. Yeah. Yes, it's a two, two press thing. I'm a hassle about laptops. I've got a keyboard, uh, to go, an external keyboard for my laptop for that reason. 
some manufacturers will have it be some special shift key, like they might have it printed in a different color, and they'll print like the alt or the control key. And Well, I will go out front and wait, and when you're ready uh, to move on, you can join me out there, and that will be your vote for time to move on. Recent call? That's yes. Yeah. Uh, along the back wall, you'll find furnaces uh, stuck in the wall, and then above the furnaces, you'll find smokers. The smokers will only... Uh, process food and they process food at twice the speed that a furnace would mm. Mm -hmm. so there's definitely an advantage to using them and they taste better how do you cook your fish again sorry i'm really way behind everybody else that, that's all right i i, I I love to repeat things in case you hadn't noticed that. Um, if you do it at a campfire, you'll right hand click the fish on each corner of the campfire and then wait for it to pop up like a toaster. Um, if you want to do it in a, a smoker or a furnace, you'll want a piece of coal uh, and you'll right hand click on the smoker or the furnace uh, and put the fish in the top block uh, space and the fuel in the bottom and then wait for the fire to go out. Okay, I'm not sure where I am though. I'm... Mm, I uh, do you right? know whether it's a campfire, a fire or a furnace? <laughs> what do they look like? Uh, it, uh, it looks like you're looking at a campfire. That's a campfire. Yeah, and so, it looks like there's already some fish cooking on it. It's, it oh, could be mine then. Just approach it. Oh, oh. Approach it. Step up. Approach it and grab your fish. Oh, well done. You, right. you turned red. When you that. And, and I got one of yours that popped up. Cooked. Oh, okay. Right I see. It's cooked. I got it. Yep. And I'm going to catch what he would like one. Well, I don't think I don't think mm -hmm. I think cats will only drop it. I see, yeah. I think I've got the idea now. There's, there's another campfire if you want to put in there. I put down some additional campfires if we can have more fish. Right. Yeah, if you took some damage when you stepped over the campfire, you can eat some of your fish to heal that damage. Uh, okay. um, and how do you eat again? Uh, if you equip the food and then right hand click, and you have to hold the right hand click down with the food. I got it. There's okay. some baked potatoes to go with. <laughs> I've got to make some space around here. Can we get a quick group photo while everyone's here? <laughs> How do we do that? Everybody stand on the steps. Everybody stands on, yeah. stand on the steps and face the swords. Face the swords. Yay! And then anybody that wants a picture can just hit F5 twice and snap it. Let me, let me, okay. Let me snap a photo. Let me, one, two, one. How do you put? Are, are you snapping photos? We don't, we don't have an F5. We're on. Yeah, it'll be an FN combination. Okay. 
Yeah, there, there might be another key mapped to it. Uh, if you go into your uh, escape and options and controls, it might tell you what you have to press. Cool fireworks. How do they work? How do they happen? Sorry. Somebody, somebody has a weapon that shoots them. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Did you spare your picture for that? I think I got everyone. Oops, sorry. The cat is on the chest. <laughs> Don't want to move. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to hurt him. That's my cat. I don't know how all my animals arrived all of a sudden. That's good. Okay. Hold that fan and then click F5. Oh. Okay. Now what? It's an hour. Okay, is, is everybody here ready to move on then? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't want people to. I don't want to rush you, but I don't want people to get bored either. Okay. I'm, I'm just cooking my last salmon, then I'll be ready. Okay. When it pops up, I'll put out the fires. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody remember how to put the pointer back on, like the plus arrow pointer, after the F5s, because it disappeared. Uh, F5 is a three-way toggle button, so you might just try hitting it again. F1 should let you bring your HUD up or down. Experiment. Okay, if everyone will follow me, we're going to go to a secret place. Yay. I like secrets. I'll probably get lost. <laughs> Where did you go? Uh, okay, to, I see to you. The top of the stairs. I'm gonna stick to close to Van Vance if I can. Uh oh. And any um, time that you get lost, if you just TP to me, you'll probably catch up quickly. That's usually safe because I don't there fly we go. too much. Till okay, you... got you. There you go. I'm with you. I'm, I'm right behind you. <laughs> okay. Yay. Yes. If if you didn't notice. Uh -oh. If you didn't notice, there was an upstairs in that building, but there was no way to get up there. Ah. That was intentional. Mm. Mm -hmm. Are we going in the building then? Yes, but we're using the secret back door. Ah. Oh, okay. right. my, my private quarters. Hmm. Oh, uh, and uh, along the... Uh, <laughs> idea of everyone plays a different way. Uh, when I make these places that have the villagers, if there's doors, you should close them after you go through them. Otherwise, you can either let the villagers out or let mobs in, and then the villagers will be killed. Okay. Okay, once inside, watch your step, because I tend not to make railings. <laughs> We're going to go up one flight of stairs, and then very gingerly go to the left. Gingerly. I guess it's a little safer since I built the smoker. And... I think I may have led us astray, but everyone come on up. Come on up and clear the stairway, please. Going back down again? Yes, we want to all uh, join me back down on the white and purple checkerboard. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't want to actually go up the stairs. That's the other secret place. Ah. Okay, just... um, if you fell all the way down, you'd have to go all the way around the outside. It's probably quicker to just TP to us. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> the dungeon. 
Yeah, this is this is the gingerly go place. There's just a one wide diagonal path to this what? white space. And if you fall, you'll be punished. <laughs> Sorry, kitty. Give me a second and I'll be kind. Yay. Boy. That's better. <laughs> this is not like me. And you'll see here uh, yet another uh, colored wool hoop. This one is a different color. Uh, it's colored to align itself with another village called Strongfield, which is where all the people from this area moved to when they used up all the resources here. So if you go through the uh, portal, you will end up in Strongfield. I like having stories for things. That's how I remember things. Mm -hmm. It'd be a dangerous place. No, 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 no. There's a creeper. No, 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 no. Creeper. Look. Come on. Killed it. Wow. You're so good. <laughs> Save your hearts. Now, the reason that this place exists, besides being a place for all the people to go and have new resources to work with, is I thought some of the newer players might have gotten the idea that maybe I'd like to try managing a village and doing some of the things that I've seen other people do. But that seems like a whole lot of work and time that I don't have. So I set up this village and did a lot of the setup work at the beginning, which is basically putting a wall around the outside to get the village started. But then I stopped, which is hard for me, uh, and left it uh, at the starting phase. So if anyone would like to try uh, managing a village and creating it to be something that they would like it to be, this one is set up to be that easy start. In the corner where we came in, there are portals to a couple other places. Uh, one goes back to where we just came from, the Sperdy Fell. One goes to a place called Invictus, which is a village that I made last year, which is fully fleshed out and has some resources that you can gather. Uh, and then one is a place called uh, Grindstone Harbor, which is the links of the cyan portals that are uh, I created for this year's setting. So it would take you back to maybe things that are doing that people are doing this year. So anybody that would like to is more than welcome to move in here, uh, live in one of these houses, uh, start managing these villages, and make of this place what you will. Um, I will try to be hands-off and just let you do with it what you like, uh, unless you would like my help and actually invite me to help you. I will, <laughs> from this point forward, be hands-off and just let it be what you want it to be. Uh, where Bobby is outside now, um, there was what they call a ruined portal, which I fixed so it goes back into the nether, but I discovered that it goes into a very rough part of the nether. <laughs> so I put up a warning message, warning people that if they go through it's a tough place. And then when I went to come back through, it didn't come back here. It came back to the nether portal that I had created in the Well Well Warp, which is coincidentally the other quick way to get back to the Scaredy Fell build, which is where we had the fish fry. So when you get bored playing around here and have had enough, if you do slash warp well well, that's another shortcut way to get back to the place where we did the fish fry. So if you want to go back there and play, um, you're more than welcome. Uh, I would just ask that in the area immediately around the, the, the monument area that you not build anything because I have plans for that area. Um, any questions at that point? That kind of concludes the prepared stuff I had.
So, Jack, let, let me. Can I ask you a question about um, Certainly. building this village? What do you usually do? Like you, you mentioned, the first thing is to build up a wall surrounding it, and yes. then. What I normally do uh, would be to do it all in survival because that's mm -hmm. what's more fun for me. Uh, but because I didn't have a lot of time and I don't have a lot of resources um, recently, um, I went into creative to get it done in time for this presentation. So I basically got the wall around the outside because that keeps the villagers alive long enough for me to finish the process. And then I'll go through and if there are holes in the ground um, that lead to dark places, that's places for mobs to come up from and kill villagers at night. So I'll normally seal those up or maybe mm -hmm. create mines there. Uh, I, my main priority at the beginning is to make a safe place for villagers to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of times will involve putting up more lights. Um, mm -hmm. If then to a village that Sura has done, you'll see that she puts up lots of torches, lots and lots of torches. Yeah. Personally, I don't care for that. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I just don't like doing it that way. So I generally will use pumpkins buried flush in the ground so jack-o'-lanterns will give off light. Or I will use um, lanterns, which I find aesthetically more pleasing, less, less objectionable to my particular aesthetic. And there's nothing wrong with the way that she does it. It throws lots of light, and some people like that look. So there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't. I just don't do it that way. Um, and then once I've got a safe place for the villagers, and I don't have to worry about them dying at night when I forget to sleep, um, then I'll go around and make sure that all the villagers have a workstation, and I'll train some of them up so that if I need equipment, armor, or weapons or tools, they provide trades to get me that. Because I don't like. Um, farming up a lot of diamonds and building my own stuff because then when you lose it you've got to spend all those long hours again doing that i don't like that particular game loop i like building um mm -hmm. so that's that's the way i do it uh, that's not necessarily necessarily saying that's the right way to do it that's just what i find enjoyable and that's what i think is the right way to do it is do what you find fun because you're, if you're going to spend time here, it should be enjoyable. Uh, and don't spend more time than you should doing something that you don't get something out of. Just my advice. And then build more houses, right? In the village? Um, yeah, if, if you want more villages, they'll need a place to live. Um, some people, like many times, I'll build what I call a condominium, which is one house that I trap all the villagers in and keep them safe because they can't get out of it. Um, another way to do it, uh, which is also something I like, is what's called a free range village where the villagers can come in and outside anytime they want, which I think is the quote better way of doing it. But again, that's just my bias. Mm -hmm. Thanks for so did you build all these houses? Um, well, this, this village, um, what's inside the walls is 97, 98% the way it was here. Okay. So I just lucked out this, we are not that far. We could walk back to Spire Detail from here. It's not yeah. that far. Like if you fly up, often if you go to the, the DIN map uh, and zoom out, you can get both of them in the same picture. And I'll post that map when, uh, when we're done here so that people can see where this is. I mean, these villagers could have walked here from Spire Detail. Oh, I see. And of course, that's, that's the other thing that I like doing is, is making stories. Like, I could create a comic book that tells the history of this place and illustrate it with uh, screen grabs from InWorld and, and do the text, which okay. for language educators, I think is where Minecraft really has the most to offer. Um, people enjoy coming in game and creating worlds and stories. Um, and then the way you would, or the way I would use that to teach language is then have them write um, because that's an enjoyable activity and uses language and uses it in a way that's 
and I can't think of the word now, I'm sorry, authentic, uh, mm -hmm. because they're going to push their vocabulary for just that right word, use just the right way to communicate, which is what language is for. To me, to me anyway, you, you can see where I get on my soapbox and you're going to have to interrupt me because it's the only way you're going to get a word in it. I'm, I'm sorry. That was really interesting. Thank you for talking about language like that. That really helped me get excited about what we're doing here. And to yeah. me, that's, that's the key, the key element. That's why we would game in the classroom It's because of the passion. If you want someone to do something, you have to get them excited about it because it's the only way they're actually going to do it with any kind of enthusiasm and have it stick and be worthwhile and meaningful. And we come back to that word authentic. It's the only now way that, it's really now that said, I, I had to jump out, by the way, on a phone call that came in. So um, let's come back into the tail end of this discussion. Then I have to go to bed for class tomorrow. But, I, think, uh, I think we can allow that. No, no, yeah, no, wink. But uh, um, let's say, talk about the passion. Um, one of the interesting presentations at the last job call 2019, the one I did with Jane, uh, we watched one of the presentations that was about language learning in Second Life. And it was actually the presentation of this guy's PhD research. And in his summation, he was talking about the positive things, but he also said there were a certain number of, of participants in his study that simply were not interested in gaming. And for them, it had no benefit because they were not interested in the gaming environment, the gaming experience. And so while you could say, yes, you know, the passion is necessary, it's very hard to say, I'm going to bring 30 students or 15, whatever, into Minecraft, and they're all going to be passionate about Minecraft. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. That was the one thing that I learned the most from my final career as an instructional developer. If you hold a gun to faculty's heads and say, you will learn technology and use it in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That is the key ingredient for failure. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and when they hired me for the position, that was the recipe they gave me. Mm -hmm. And so my, oh. first, my first official act as instructional developer was to go to my boss and say, no. <laughs> and luckily, my boss said, okay, what then? And she was the best boss in the world. Mm -hmm. So I had a successful career there. I had the best job in the world. I, I played with toys and showed other people how to play with toys. And that was the recipe for success. Okay, Doc, I'm going to thank you very much. because That was, that was a very low energy yay, by the way. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's past past our witching hour here where I am, so I'm going to uh, avoid the witches, and Bobby and I are going to call it a night. And the the recording has gone on for an hour. That doesn't mean you have to leave. You're you're quite welcome yeah. to stay, but I'm just going to uh, stop the recording, and also point out again that this is the 17th of January, 2022, and we're EVO Minecraft MOOC. And we've been uh, guided by Dakota Redstone and some of the builds that he's made. We appreciate that very much. And, and before you stop the recording, I want to say again on the record, thank you very much for recording, Vance. Sure. My pleasure. Let's, let's hope I actually did record. <laughs> okay. All right. So good night, everybody. Okay. Off we go. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Sure. I'll bye -bye. see you again. Bye okay. Us. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming.